uh hi everyone so today we will try to understand time series forecasting using the kalman filter the kalman filter is one of the most complicated and one of the most used filters in the real world in the real world algorithm in the real world for time series forecasting and corrections as well uh so let's get started what is kalman filter and what it is all about so kalman filter belongs to a a family of algorithm called as state space models so what is that a state space models uh in layman terms uh, states that any real world entity so it's more towards the real world entities right so we uh, we have discussed about algorithms like uh, auto regression uh, sarima uh, arimax holt winters etc but in that case they really don't under, they really don't incorporate the real world dynamics as well like some uh, some error terms coming in some forces working on the values etc in state series models we are trying to incorporate all the real world entities that would affect the values so it's more complicated and more accurate as well so uh, the state space model has majorly two assumptions one is that the actual value of something can never be measured right for example if you are trying to measure a height also uh, using some instrument the instrument must be having some error like now there is some temperature also working some gravity also working so eventually you won't be getting the actual value always now the second point that the state space model states is that you can always infer the actual values from the measurements that you have got so by correcting errors by incorporating the forces and all the other environmental variables that are present we can always get to the actual values now a kalman filter was am is among the most popular and widely used algorithms not just for time series forecasting but also for correction of values uh, also estimating true states of lot of real world entities so if you might be a bit um, shocked to know that this algorithm was used for nasa by nasa in the apollo 11 mission where neil armstrong landed on the moon so this algorithm is very very important so first of all let's understand where we can apply the kalman filter so the kalman filter can be applied uh, when we have uh, when our system satisfy the below two the two equations that i have mentioned that is x t equals to f uh, f into x t minus 1 plus b into u t plus w t and y t equals to a into x t plus v t now let's understand what are these terms so x t is the actual value actual value uh, with uh, without any error without any uh, measure it's the the most correct value that you can get now f b a that the equation in the equation that have been used they are all constants there are some weights present x t minus 1 is like again uh, a value back from a time stamp u t is some external force that is working on Uh, so like in case of like for example when you are measuring a height it can be the temperature the gravity it's an external force that is working wt is some random error stochastic error random that they call it now yt is the measured value right uh, and vt is the measurement error so like for example when you are measuring our weight then the measurement error can be the error of the weighing machine so you can understand that how xt and yt are different yt is the predicted one is the for, uh, is the one measured and xt is the corrected is the correct value right now uh, now we don't really need to understand this equation uh, like uh, they really don't have any correlation between them these equations are not related to each other they just the and your environment must satisfy these two equations to move ahead to use the kalman filter now let's understand how the kalman filter works what are the equations involved so the kalman filter can be divided into three parts one is the predictions other is the calculating the kalman filter constant and third is the filtering part filtering part is majorly the correction part that we are calling about so in prediction uh, we have the values xpt equals to uh, f cross xt minus 1 plus b cross ut and ppt equals to we are calculating two variables xpt and ppt uh now xpt and ppt are the predicted values can be called as a measured measured value as well so in uh, like in different scenarios it can be different values so in terms of time series we can call it as a predicted value and later on we will be filtering out to get the actual values right in case of when we are measuring a weight can be called as a measured value and when we are applying the filters it will be called as a actual value so xpt is that yt that we are talking about right the pt term that pt subscript that has been applied is the more of the yt terms that are getting predicted by the system but are not the actual values as we said that values can't be measured ever the real values can't be measured ever now in this equation pt is the covariance matrix of the error terms uh, this is something that i haven't discussed yet and i really couldn't find out much on it on the internet as well uh, now next we calculate the kalman filter 
using all these variables i'll be discussing what are these variables these are tough equations so explain this equation won't make any sense we will explain the terms that have been used and then the filtering part so the filtering part you can see that how the predicted values are used to get to the final value and the predicted value you can see that we are using the predicted value we are also using kalman filter or uh, the kalman filter constant that has been calculated and also the measured value as well and tt uh is again getting updated that is the error covariance matrix so if you look look into it x is the term to be forecasted at time stamp t forecasted or the actual value that we wish to get it's the final value that we wish to get p is the error covariance matrix uh, nothing i really couldn't find much about on the internet pt is a subscript used to denote predicted terms they aren't the final terms as i said you earlier prediction plus filtering gives us the final terms uh kt is the kalman gain at time stamp t kalman gain is a kalman constant that we are talking about that is getting used a f b uh, that are getting used are all constants uh r is a measurement error q is a stochastic error variance r is a measurement error variance variance of the vt that we saw in the equation earlier we were trying to satisfy two equations q is a stochastic error variance and yt is a measured value now uh, a big big problem before we wrap up we can see in kalman filter is that uh, there are a lot of variables to determine a lot of assumptions has to be made a lot of most of the time the force ut is taken as zero but we need to get with initial values of x0 p0 y and v also the constant variables like f a b alongside r q we have been using five constants f b q r a as well and the and their transpose also so they all are need to be determined